featured one of these things before. It's a tip temperature um, measuring device for soldier irons. And the previous one I looked at was a rip-off of a Hakko, and this is also a rip-off of a Hakko. And you can find these online if you just look FG-100. And there's some oddities because it is a rip-off. It's not actually got the functionality. Though it comes with instructions that appear to be aimed at the original, it's got a few oddities. So let's uh, test this out first. It's got um, a thermocouple down here in the shape of Y, and these are changeable because you can only use it X number of times before it actually needs replaced. It starts giving inaccurate readings. They quote 50, but I don't think it really gives that many before you have to change it. And the point of the device here is it's a thermocouple which uh, is uh, two different metals joined together in a sort of crimped junction or, or bonded junction. And when you heat them up, they gen the different metals generate a slight electrical difference um, and it can be uh, used to actually indicate the temperature quite accurately. So I think this is a K-type thermocouple which indicates the specific metals it's made of. So let's get a bit of solder and test this soldering iron tip. So you put a bit of solder on to wet the tip and you place it onto the little junction and that is about right. It is round about the 340 mark. So that's not bad. Now, it's got this max hold function. And if you press it, it doesn't actually hold the maximum value. If I put that back on, it's not going to capture that reading. That's just a hold function like you'd normally find on a uh, digital meter. Um, the on-off function... A simple on off button. It does say that after three minutes of non use, if it uh, doesn't detect use, it will switch itself off and it will reset. If it's going through that three minutes and then it detects a sudden rise in temperature, it will cancel that and it will just stay on uh, until uh, you know it's detected the three minutes of inactivity. It doesn't. Uh, so these are things that you know are copied from the original manual but they're, they, they're not actually implemented in this. So uh, to release the thermocouple for changing it, you push the button aside. I'll just turn this off. Push the button aside and it just nudges this little pin down and then you can lift the thermocouple off. So let's uh, open this up and take a look inside. The back comes off to reveal the battery. I'll just focus uh, up in a sort of middle position now just because I'm uh, using my little focus cheat sheet. Um, screwdriver. That'll do. So we'll have a wee look inside at this. Now, you can't really use an ordinary thermocouple um, for this task. There's something special about the little crimp in these things. Um, it really just looks like a little piece of metal squished flat. Can I show you this? If I, if I bring it up, is it going to focus on that? I think it is. Uh, it's basically the two dissimilar metals and then this little crimp just crushed onto them um, and if I, if you try using a different thermocouple if you try using something like um, this just a common cheap eBay type K thermocouple and you put the soldier iron end of this the lead or tin or whatever uh, soldier you're using seems to interact with the operation of the thermocouple and you end up with erroneous readings. It, it will let me demonstrate. I've got the soldier iron here, might as well demonstrate what happens. So if you try touching it, it you sometimes get the reading, correct reading, and other times, I mean, that's just completely wrong. It's And then if you move it to a different position, then you get a much higher reading and move it to other positions and you get weird readings. That's about the closest there. Um, actually, is that just actually going across the wires? No, it's very random. It really is random what you get. Which is a shame, because it would be really handy being able to use this to test the uh, soldering tip temperature. Now, you don't actually need really 100% one of these to... Uh, you don't need to calibrate your soldering station. Uh, it's enough if you're comfortable with soldering to just get... just fine-tune the temperature yourself. Set it to a sort of typical temperature... Um, and then if, it feel, if it's not melting the solder easily and you've got a clean tip, then turn the temperature up. Or if it's maybe smoking too much and, uh, the you know, going a bit crusty in the tip, turn the temperature down. You, you'll just find the right level. 
So the inside of this, there's the, oh, blame me, it's spring-loaded. There's the uh, tensioner for the thermocouple with its captive spring. Here's the leads going out to the thermocouple section. Now, I did notice that uh, there's a couple of recesses in the end that are presumably for a K-type thermocouple plug. Um, the circuit board is not really that surprising. It's got... Um, Where's a... I've completely misplaced... Uh, there it is. What is that chip? The chip is... Oh, it's a standard logic chip. HEF... 4013BT, which is uh, pretty much a flip-flop, I think, which is what the, it's being used to toggle both the hold function and the um, on-off function. That's I, I wasn't expecting that. So this really is just a bog-standard sort of meter chip, um, perhaps a, a, a standard temperature sensor chip. Um, what's the little uh, transistory type thing there? Nine two M one one two E. Not sure that is. Uh, there's two potentiometers, two trimmers for tuning this up. That's it's nice that it's got that, but then how do you calibrate it? I suppose ultimately the way you could calibrate it is you could apply a controlled DC voltage across these that you would know would be what would be created by a thermocouple at that temperature because you do get charts of the resist of the um, voltage output versus temperature of the K-type thermocouples. So I suppose one of these might be to tune the lower level, you know, just to sort of you tune it, use it to, say, ambient room level or even tune out the zero position, the zero voltage uh, for like, a, I'm not sure if what um, a thermocouple would put out at zero degrees, a uh, type K. Uh, but then you could uh, take it up to the extreme and say uh, 400 degrees uh, and apply that voltage across it and then tune the other one uh, up to that. That's what I'm guessing. Don't know if that's exactly how it is, but it's fairly straightforward and simple inside. It's just using standard components, and that's why it doesn't have the real functionality of the original. But um, it's usable. The quality of construction is a bit shonky. Uh, this label is squint. Um, it's been put in wrong. And it's also got a matte finish in it. And I, I was trying to peel a protective layer off, but there is none. That is it. It's a matte finish so far in front of the LCD that it makes it look just a little bit fuzzy. But um, it's an interesting device, but to be honest, it's not one of the best. It's maybe not one I'd actually recommend. Um, the original uh, Hako, what was the number of the one? Uh, 191. I think I preferred that one. It was just more down to earth and functional. This one's just uh, using fake features to try and make it look something special. But uh, interesting to open up anyway.